The first reading this morning is actually from Matthew 28, reading from verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The second reading is from Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, as we hear them speaking, about God's deed of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. The word of God for the people of God. And as always, I thank the choir for your beautiful music before I stand up here to talk. I thank Mary for having a reverend doctor in front of your name so you can pronounce all those names of people in that scripture. One of the real challenges of being a liturgist is to do something like Mary did masterfully. I want to thank whoever thought of red for Pentecost. Well, it's tradition, but I don't wear red except for this day. This is my only time I wear this stole. I'm wearing red socks even, just so you know, red socks and a red tie. So this is my big red day. Glad to be part of it all. It's a big day for the church as well. And again, it's so great to see this color here to signify the, the, the fire and the wind and all that with the liturgical art people. And so we are graced by their handiwork and the doves right above us, coming downward to us. And we come to the second to the last part of a series called Freeing Jesus. We started this on Easter Sunday, a book by Diana Butler Bass, Freeing Jesus, and now today it's Jesus as Presence. Next Sunday, the last of the series will be Jesus as Lord. But Jesus as Presence for Pentecost, what a more appropriate uh, combination of a book and of a day, of a theme in what we're doing here on Pentecost. So let us look more closely at this after a prayer, so let us pray. Gracious and holy God, the winds of your spirit has come upon us. And may we now indeed have those tongues of fire that we might understand your word, understand each other, 
open our eyes and our seeing, our ears and our hearing, our lives and our living this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. What a difficult time, a perplexing time to be the church. This weekend, actually, I just realized sitting there that this weekend is exactly 38 years since I began my first day at my first church in Lake Forest, Illinois, 38 years ago, 1984 in June. I think it was June 4th. Here we are on June 5th. 38 years where I keep seeing polls like I saw this past week in the New York Times in part of an article there. Maybe you saw a Gallup poll on religion. And it said for the first time ever we've had less than 50% of people uh, feel that religion is important in their lives. The first time ever. Since 1957 when participation as Christians was at a level let's say 73%, we are now down to 36% in our country. We know that, we feel that, we see that. And 49% of the people don't think that religion is that important to them anymore. Oh, what a day to have a Pentecost celebration. To have, as tradition tells us, a birthday for the church, the birth of the church. But how difficult it is, not only with those statistics, but also with the world around us. We know the issues that swirl around the world to us and those that hit us the most deeply. You know what those things are. And then to understand something that I learned in seminary, two big words, one transcendence and one eminence. Transcendence means that God is beyond, out there somewhere. It's Jesus sitting next to God in a cloud on the right hand of God. In fact, the early church melded into the empire church, and through those centuries of the empire church, they promoted the idea of God being transcendent because if God's way up there, they can do whatever they want down here. But there's the eminence, the one where Jesus is with us present, present in the communion table. Jesus with us through these elements. Jesus with us, sitting with us in our pain and sorrow. Jesus celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Jesus with us, walks with us, holds our hand. That's the eminence part and how we need the eminence in today's world. Well, the people gathered on Pentecost. That's the 50 days after Easter in Jerusalem, a big celebration, a Jewish celebration festival. It says they were all in one place from all over. Can you recite those names again of all the? So you can read them in your scripture then. They're all from across the known world. And we know what happened, right? We know something took place that day. The wind started to blow and then they could understand each other in their own language. It wasn't as if they could speak that language, they could just understand it, almost as if it was humanity talking, where we know when people are in pain, or we know when people are in joy, despite the words we use in different languages. We can tell if we get deep enough in humanity, and maybe that's what's going on as well in this story. I said earlier that this is known to be the birthday of the church. But if you read a little farther into the scripture, you'll find out that Peter stands up and explains what was happening to them. Now, Peter could have used a lot of doctrines in the church if he was living later on. He could have used a lot of statements the church has made through the years that we can only do things this way and that way and and certain people are are allowed to be part of the church and the other ones aren't. It's been that way through the generations. Uh, Diana Brother Bass tells even this morning on her blog that she was so upset to read something that happened in in her Episcopalian denomination where there were theologians saying that uh, all God's people 
are not all people that are allowed to take communion. We have this situation in the Presbyterian Church. Every church has institutions, ways to keep others out, and we have reasons for it, I'm sure, and all those things, but she was so upset because she was reading that all God's people are not all people. She said that in Pentecost, the story here, the, the, God's Spirit didn't come down upon just those who would later become Christians. That would come later on before that word was even used. They were Jews gathered together for a festival. The Holy Spirit didn't pick some that were going to be Christian and some that weren't and just left them behind. It was all God's people. All people are God's people. That's what she was trying to say this morning in that blog. So it made me look more closely at what Peter was saying when he stood up then. He stood up and he chose the prophet Joel. You know Joel? Great prophet, wonderful words, and Peter chose a selection from that scroll of Joel where it says God's spirit came upon all flesh and the men will have their dreams and the young men will dream and prophesy and women and, men, and slaves and so forth. It goes on with that story. All flesh. It means all of human nature. It means all living beings. It doesn't mean all Christians. We have a sense that maybe it's all about us, about our church, about being a birthday for our church, but really it is a rebirth of humanity, all humanity. Imagine if we were to, to understand this rebirth, this, this happening that's going on in the world where God's spirit is upon us, all flesh, that we have open arms and we are open to the world and all the struggles of our world and that we're there to respond to that. I can imagine what that means. What if we were to really take that seriously? It means that if there's issues of climate change, we are part of trying to figure it out as Christians. It means if there is gun violence that's wrecking and racking our society, that we are, as Christians, compelled to do something about it because we're all human, we're a part of humanity. It means if there's people who are poor and don't have any food or any place to stay, whatever it, that need is in humanity, we're part of that. We are connected one to another because we can understand the language of need or of sorrow. You know, yesterday I was down in Albuquerque with the program with New Mexicans to prevent gun violence on, on and trying to deal with all the violence going on around us and at a table there outside we're in a parking lot of a Presbyterian church there's a table with three families there and one of the other volunteers from our group asked me to come over and just to say hi I went over there and found out that they were all in sorrow over losing uh, three sons each, one for each family from gun violence one as recently as February and they came just to be part of this, to be with other people who were concerned with that issue. And there were no words. I had no words to say except I'm so glad you're here. There's no words that can go deeply enough to, hit, to reach that pain. But isn't that the language of humanity where we can just be with somebody in such pain and sorrow? No words. What if there's a new rebirth today? Not just for the Christian church that we can add to our numbers. No. It's a rebirth for humanity to say, we got to start again, and here's a chance. And it's not all up to us. You'll notice in our story that all the people that were gathered there were not expecting to be part of a rebirth. 
They did not plan for it. They did not have meetings a month or two beforehand to make sure they had all the, 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 the right settings on the table and the right food to bring and the right agenda about that. No, it was the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit coming down upon the people and saying, and here's something new for you. Do you feel it? Are, are, do, you, do you feel the heat of God's presence? And what are you going to do about it? Well, in Scripture, in Acts 2, later on, if you read the story, some did. Some got together, and they shared all they had. They shared their meals with each other. They broke bread together. They prayed together. They went to the temple together. They gave all they had to all those who were in need, a new humanity. I'm so grateful to be here after 38 years to participate in this new humanity with all of you. Oh, the polling can be rather depressing about the church, but the inspiration that we can receive and do receive from God's Spirit in the world can be so exhilarating. They say it best in Scripture. Read all those words you have in your bulletin. Sometimes look at all the words that take place in that story, and you're going to be amazed at what they were feeling and experiencing and the excitement for being part of something that was starting again. And so, my friends, I think this is actually a fantastic time to be part of the church. I think it's an amazing time to be part of the church. It can be also perplexing, as it says in our story. But it's some place that we can gather and we can start anew because God's Spirit has fallen on us and upon all humanity. Well, thanks be to God for that idea, that promise, and thanks be to God for all of you as we celebrate this new beginning in the world. Amen.